Welcome back, guys. My bros. My Avaya bros. So, yeah, welcome back to another video. Uh, today, what we're going to be looking at is uh, how to install Avaya or a session manager on VMware. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what we're going to be looking at. So, what we'll do is we'll go to the Avaya support site and go to downloads. We'll just type in uh, session manager in here. We download 8.1 and then what we're going to need to do is we will need to download well first of all we'll arrange that by date so we can uh, guarantee we're going to get the absolute latest so we're going to need to go into this so we'll open that up in a new tab and we're also going to need the ova so what we'll do is we'll click on that so what we'll do is uh we're going to want to download this one here for vmware there are other options as well for Amazon Web Service and KVM, but because this is going to be going on VMware, I'm going to be downloading this one. And then if we head over to, where is it, this tab here, we're also going to want to download our latest uh, patch file as well. Now, I already have those files. They're actually present in my uh, SDM folder, which is over here. And as you'll see, we have uh, the 8.1.3 session manager bin file, and we also have the OVA file as well. So if I just minimize that, what I want to do is go over to our SDM client, click on new, and then just populate these out here. So my locations are via lab, lab VMware, I only have one data store. Click next, and then what else we'll need to do as well is um, click on software library because that's where the files are and then we're going to select this one here 8.1 and then we have to specify a flexi footprint now this is just uh, basically how many users the uh, session manager is going to be used for um, and that also adjusts the uh, the virtual hardware requirements as well so as you'll see in here profile one uses less resource than profile two profile two um, supports you know max devices four and a half thousand so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go with uh, profile one because this is a lab system and i don't have anywhere near two thousand devices what we'll do is we'll click on next and we'll just need to give it a name so let's call it lab sm01 the host name will be lab sm01 via lab which we don't need to put that we'll just leave it like that and then a via lab dot local in here we'll give it the IP address so 10 2 1 we'll give it 2 1 5 slash 24 so the subnet mask is fine we'll set that to 10.2.1.1 I'm not using IPv6 so I will leave that blank and then what else I'll do is just set the time zone to the correct one because I'm in the United Kingdom we'll set it to Europe and London and then my NTP servers I'll just use some public ones for the time being but really if you have uh, internal NTP servers then uh, I would recommend putting the internal ones in here DNS server 10.2.3.100 and my search domain list will just be a via lab.local. And we have to give it the primary system manager IP. So that's 10 to 1.210. And then the enrollment password we set in system manager. So for the time being, we could actually set this to anything we wanted. Um, and it wouldn't really make any difference because uh, we can always change it later. But I'm going to set the enrollment password to what I want it to be. And then we need to uh, just set up a, a customer login. So we'll call this lab admin and set the password. Scroll down. So what we can do is we can enable EASG or disable it. I would recommend enabling EASG because if you need to get support from a via and EASG is enabled, it just creates like the craft, the, um, the init, the in ads, user accounts. So a via are able to get in if uh, if there's a problem, like say your user accounts become locked, and then uh, they'll be able to get in and do that using the SAL gateway or an LMI session. So the um, the other thing I like about using the SDM client 
is that if we were to deploy this OVA straight into VMware, then we wouldn't get this option to enable the customer root account. So I like using the SDM client for this because I like having root access. If you need to do something that um, you can't do using this standard customer login, then I would definitely recommend uh, you know, enabling the root access, especially if you lose the password to this or the password expires or someone else changes it or any of those sort of situations. You can still get in with root from the VMware console. You won't be able to SSH using root. You can still use root from the VMware console and you could reset the password to this account and get back in or just other stuff like that. It's a very handy thing to have. So once we're all happy that this information we've entered here is correct, I like to just double check and go over it again just to make sure it's all okay because if it's not, it could result in us having to redeploy our OVA. And of course that's quite time consuming and doing repetitive tasks can sometimes be a little bit annoying. So make sure that all of this information here is uh, correct first time around. And then what we'll do is we'll just go to the network parameters and set our network interfaces for this virtual machine to be on the uh, correct port group. So I'm going to select via servers. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click deploy. I'll just accept that. And what will happen now is the machine that I'm running the SDM client on is going to copy the files to the VMware host. Um, it's going to extract them. It's going to create the virtual machine. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video. Well, I'm going to stop the video for the time being. Um, and we'll revisit this in just a while once this has finished deploying itself. So um, yeah, we'll, um, we'll leave it there for the moment. And uh, we'll revisit that in just a second. Okay, so my system manager has now deployed. And what we're going to want to take a look at now is uh, just uploading the latest patch to it. So if we just SSH to it, and we'll log in using our lab admin account. And it's telling us that our customer root account is active because we ticked the box in the SDM client for that. So if we just expand this a little bit, just make it bigger. If we type in alias, just like we did with System Manager. Again, there's a lot of commands here that we can use to, uh, you know, we can execute a lot of commands here. Um, so, for example, I'll just run through some of these as, as they're quite helpful. If for whatever reason you needed to change any of the network parameters on uh, the session manager, then you can run this via net setup. Um, there is also another one here which does exactly the same thing uh, as change management, management IP. Um, but yeah, so you can run these commands and uh, they'll basically do some stuff here. You go SM net setup and the via net setup are basically pretty much the same thing. Uh, again, you can do some EASG stuff. Um, but the one that we're going to be taking a look at is going to be this where is it where is it gone there there's patch sm and then there's also upgrade sm as well so uh, these are the two commands that are, are used to apply patches so what we need to do is the same as what i did in the uh, in the system manager patching video what we're going to do is we're just going to log in using winscp and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, where is it gone? So this session manager patch here, if we just move that down here, accept that. What I'm going to do is a session manager patch. I'm going to copy into uh, just the home directory of the lab admin. We could probably copy it to temp or something like that. I think it should be sufficient enough just to add in there. What else I'll do is uh, we'll just do a quick check to make sure that file is definitely there. And also, if we just check, see I have enough space on here. So where are we? Home. Yep, there's more than enough space on there. So what we can do now is now we're in a situation where we've logged into the session manager. We've copied the file over. The file is here. So what we need to do now is I think it's patch sm and then followed by the uh, file name. And what we do is just hit enter. It verifies the signature. 
the same as what it did before on the uh, the system manager patch and then it will just go ahead and it will uh, it'll extract the files and it will patch um, session manager so like we did before in the system manager video we have to accept the, uh, the end user license agreement and all that sort of stuff and then it will begin to uh, to install itself so the way the lab system is at the moment is uh, the system manager is installed um, and it's patched it has no configuration in it so in one of the next videos what we'll be doing is although we've built the session manager the session man manager is ready for us to uh, to start using once we start uh, programming all the parameters up in our system manager so I just press space on that a few times to uh, go past it put Y in there to accept it and press enter and then what it will do is it will say the system will be rebooted after the uh, patch is applied do you wish to continue well it's a lab system and there's nothing being used at the moment anyway so it's fine but it is one of those things to take into consideration if um, this is being done in a live environment it will reboot the session manager so uh, i would recommend probably not doing this during the day or only doing this during the day if um you know there is another session manager or another group of session managers that are able to um you know serve calls in place of this one but for the time being what we'll do is we'll just put y and hit enter and it will probably tell me that my system uh, sorry my session manager is not in maintenance mode or in deny of service because it doesn't even have any parameters from the uh, the system manager because it doesn't exist in there what i'm doing uh, at the moment is i'm just installing session manager and patching it ready for the next video for when we do uh, configure the uh, system manager up to have all those parameters in for it and that's pretty much what will happen it will um it will start the patch installation it'll update these sort of things and then what it will do is it'll apply the uh, security updates and then there's a, a long list of other things that it will update and then it will go ahead and reboot itself so as you can see it's done these it's cleaning these up and then there's another list of things that's going to update So we'll just be patient to uh, wait for that other list. I mean, I could end the video now, but I'll show you this list here because it's the most exciting thing in the world. So here we go. We've got one of 169 items left to, uh, to go. It's done a few of them. So that is how you um, apply a patch to the session manager so what i'm going to do is i'll leave the video here and uh yeah the next video we'll go into detail about adding all of the configuration into system manager for our session manager and then we'll also add our communication manager and add some certificates for that and then set up all of the entity links the domain names the root and policies and stuff like that so yep Bear with me, next video is going to be in progress. Um, if you found this video, if you found this video was a help to you in any way, then obviously please give me the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and uh, I'd like to see some comments in that comment section below. So, yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, until next time, enjoy.